It's about boycotting bands who are homophobic and sexist and racist and right wing. And this is the perfect place. So essentially, we realised there was a massive issue with harassment being swept under the rug by this certain festival. And when it was brought to their attention, their reaction was just to piss on us and sweep it under the rug and not really care. Talking about what Riot Garden is about, and I didn't realise that it's actually about the, the it's an anti-movement for the biggest fast festival that this UK has provided us. I hate that festival. I was there once. <laughs> Never go to rebellion again. If you're a punk in this room, that provides money to that festival. Fuck you. Boycott all the fucking shitty old or young, mainly old, fucking right wing, fucking shitty fake punk band. Because you ain't punk. If you're fucking right wing, you ain't a fucking punk. You can jump. Oh, well, hi, Riot Garden. Hello. It's Hello. been a long time. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you should be in the microphone because you're normally, yeah, you're yeah. normally <laughs> interviewing. Um, I think it was February last year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, time flowers. That was your debut when uh, Rebellion took you on a little yeah. bit, or you took Rebellion on. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, and um, tried to sweep on the carpet, but you got laminated flooring, so there was now sweeping. Well, exactly, exactly. Um, thing now. Sadly, Anna's not here today. No, she's she's a bit ill at the moment, but like you know, she's still she's involved with everything. She's just a bit like she just needs to take a little bit of a step back for personal stuff. But she's she's good. She's going to be back at the next one. We're taking a little bit of a break from like just gigs mm -hmm. after this one so we're gonna do some more community stuff and some cabarets and shit so then she's gonna come back to that once we've had a little bit of a break i think so yeah mm. but she's good she's good she's doing all right well, yeah. well tell me because obviously because of mprv's workloads this is our first one since your debut yeah, yeah. um so tell us how they've been going because i've noticed you've been spreading all around the country yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we've done shows in Nottingham, Bristol. It's just been, it's been immense seeing how many people have like come out and supported us and continue to support us as well. Like, yeah. it's just mad. It's all been going really well. Loving it. The Bristol one. The Bristol one was pretty fucking sick, wasn't it? Like, oh, mate, the it was Bristol a one. yeah. It was it was like it was a lush venue, so we did it at the Red Lion, which is like a bit of a like just punk bar really, and it was really nice. And like we had loads of people turn up, loads of people that we were just like, oh my god, mates! Like it was so lush, and it just yeah, it worked out really well considering that it's pretty far from Manchester. Like people still kind of knew who we were and like the lineup was brilliant we like you know we really chose the lineup really well and it just worked perfectly we had loads of different type of people come in and yeah just excited to go to more places really like it's gonna be good it sounds like bristol will be in the future yeah, bristol, again <laughs> bristol's definitely we're going back we're going back yeah yeah bristol yeah, yeah. We're coming for you again 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah bristol's music scene is just brilliant but you know you're, you're also a little bit like as lovely as bristol was like it's always fun to go to places where you know you're going to be well received sometimes mm -hmm. you're like fuck it, let's go to like, I don't know, fucking Scunthorpe or something and like really mess with some people, like, I don't know. Because it's like, Bristol's lovely and we know that it's going to be well received, but sometimes we want to go to places where it like pushes the boat out a little bit and challenges people a bit more. But Bristol's nice, like, yeah. So we're definitely going to go back mm. there, I I've think. been seeing a lot of showers in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. um, a place I want to associate uh, with punk. But well, yeah. Restarts and Boom Boom Raccoon played, didn't they? So yeah, that was good. Yeah, but Chris was telling us earlier, Chris the Merch, so yeah. that, that, you know, maybe keep an eye on that scene as well. Yeah. Um, have you got any more events planned this year, or have you but the top secret, or do I need to step on a foot just <laughs> to squeal? We have some. I can give them a little, a little, a little taster. Can I? Can I? Yeah. yeah. A little. So we we want to do a couple more like community based events so we're still mm. going to have like music and like activism at the forefront but we kind of want it to be we're thinking we want to get some people to come do some talks mm. so we're thinking manchester palestine action a lot of the manchester squat crews mm -hmm. we want to try and put on an event that's like a fundraiser um especially after brianna jai being murdered we we want to kind of do some stuff for um trans charities people of color charities mm. so we want to try and put an event on that that is really kind of inclusive of that and has kind of 
people doing talks. We also want to do some stuff with like people donating like menstrual products for women's shelters and you know some something more like that rather than like just bands and just music. But it's going to be all in the same umbrella. Yeah. Brianna yeah. Jai sort of thing. We just it was such a heartbreaking event that we were like we can't not try and make a difference with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we also, uh, we've been planning for a while and we really want to get this done, but it takes so much planning and risk assessment. Mm -hmm. So obviously, uh, Moll is very involved in kind of the queer and drag queen scene, so we want to try and bring that in. Like, I'm a circus performer, that's like my normal job, so we really want to try and do like a cabaret or something. Mm -hmm. So we're going to try and do like a riot garden cabaret at some point, which we think would be really cool, like proper like queer and angry and circus and like gay, and it's just, yeah, it's just going to be cool. But we don't know when that's going to happen, but that's kind of what's in the pipeline, so... I feel like I said a lot there, but I think it's fine. <laughs> well, I think well, it's fine. <laughs> you, you do mix things up because tonight um, is in the Alpen, which I'm mm. sure how hot it's been today, everyone's thankful. Hell. Fucking hell, yeah, it's I been mean, well hot. It's <laughs> so hot, like, so hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been a bit warm, but I think, yeah, it's going to be lovely having it outside, actually. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. really excited about that. Yeah. Mm, but you got three bands on tonight. Um, the first one opening is the Red Stains. Mm. Um, what draw you to the Red Stains as a band? So, the Red Stains, um, I've seen them a few times, uh, just in the Manchester kind of gig scene, um, and I've like met kind of Sterling a while ago, just from kind of being similar people and living in Mank and that, and um, yeah, I think what they what they sing about is amazing. It's proper like proper callback vibes to kind of like bikini kill, X-ray specs kind of vibes. But mm. then also like like they 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 really are different. Their look is amazing. They're super glamorous. Like um, yeah, and the things that they they shout about really align with Riot Garden stuff. And we you know we had a bit of a conversation with them before because like we usually at our gigs do. Um, a bit of a speech kind of in the middle um, about what Riot Garden's about, what we're passionate about and like what issues we want to shout about at the moment. But because this is Pink Suits tour, we didn't want to do that because we didn't want to make it about us. You know, it's about these guys and we think the band's speaking enough for themselves. But I said to Red Stains, like, just go ham. Just like say whatever you want. Like, I trust you. You guys have got it. And they were like, don't worry. We, we, we've got some stuff that we're angry about that we were, we're going to say. And I was like, yes, this is why I chose you guys to be on the lineup. So yeah, it's brilliant. Stuff about kind of Feminism, being a woman in the scene, being non-binary, you know, there's transgender members in that band as well, and just being fucking angry at how some men behave. Um, yeah, like there's some really, really good things that they shout about. We we, we love Red Stains, we think they're cool. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, ev just echoing everything Molly said, like the things they're singing about is, is stuff that we're really passionate about and really believe in. So like, and the great performers as well, so we couldn't not have yeah. them on the bill, like, exactly. yeah.
menstrual cramps. Uh-huh. Now, that they kind of... Who? Had, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you've interviewed them and uh, Shell's interviewed them. Uh-huh. And then on top of that, they had their issues with rebellion as well. Yeah. So there is a link there. Mm. But mm-hmm. what do you like about the band on the whole? Do you want to have a chat yeah. with menstrual cramps? Just the absolute passion they put into their music as well. Like when they're on stage, like they're screaming about like feminism and they're really going for it. And I think just that authenticity and that unapologeticness of this is what I believe in, this is what I want to happen, it just really resonates with me as well. And yeah, they're just incredible people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and they, they've been they've been going for I mean not a while, but you know like I don't think angry femme people in the punk scene was such a big thing kind of like mm. five six years ago and it was only like the menstrual cramps and petrol girls that were really being like proper blunt and angry about like issues that really mattered and that's why there was the whole load of shite with rebellion because people just mm. couldn't handle hearing about that mm. um but yeah i think i think menstrual cramps they really bluntly spell out things that really need to change and the fact is like that's what we need right now because i'm fucking done with hinting about how things are a bit shit it's actually like no like people are getting raped and assaulted like trans people are being you know completely like swept under the rug like the human rights of people of color and trans people in this country are not being protected and it's bands like the menstrual camps that are really like bringing that to the forefront and inspiring more people to start bands and come to gigs and actually like get involved with activism like that and it's just it's fucking brilliant that they're you know about like it's very needed yeah, yeah. I, I have to admit they're one of my favorite uh, what i might call modern day punk mm. bands they um they don't take shit basically no, no, you know um, yeah. um i mean you know with um, safe space at gigs, um, people need to um, look at this. And Roy Garden got messed with with rebellion. Mm-hmm. Um, so what happens? You had four to five camera people at your debut, a documentary <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. team, like, yeah. a documentary <laughs> scene, and our <laughs> mediocre video channel. Yeah, yeah. And then the um, mental cramps got messed with. They had the fucking BBC fucking there exactly. and that like. Exactly. So basically, so basically, <laughs> if you mess with and simulate, you're going to get called out yeah. big style. True. So True. safe space, remember it. We're not going anywhere. That's the thing. We're yeah. not going anywhere. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs>
suits. Um, yeah. Now, I think, is the singer American? I'm sure I detected an well, American accent. Maybe because they're from Margate, and now I was like, oh, there's a twang of something. But, yeah, maybe, I'm not sure. Yeah, I need to, we'll to chat to with uh, Lenny what, about what, that. What was you guys? Because I haven't seen these either. Well, well, actually, so Pink Suits got in touch with us. Mm. Um, so they were planning to do a tour... They got passed on to us by Joe from Garlic Bread Club, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so thanks for that. Um, yeah, and they wanted to do a tour. They wanted to come to Manchester and do a show. And they'd heard about us um, that we were, you know, had a lot of similar views, and basically. Mm -hmm. And then we checked out their music. We were like, "You guys are amazing." I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw them at one of the Garlic Bread Clubs, uh, you know, a couple of years before. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just like pure, like queer anarcho rage, mm -hmm. like proper, like. Um, don't pull any punches like very they they give me a lot like sewer cats vibes not only because there's two people but just because of the pure like rage that you can feel coming off just two members in the band like they are brilliant and we love i love that side of queer punk that is so unapologetically queer and pink and glamorous and like you know we're like reclaiming um our sexuality like regardless of where on the gender spectrum we are in the sexuality spectrum it's like we're we're pink and we're glamorous and it's cool but we're still fucking angry like you can still be like gorgeous and, and be angry and it's brilliant it's just like creating a whole new side of punk that's really needed yeah because there's, yeah. there's actually seems to be a surge of bands with just being a two-piece I mean, yeah. back in the 80s, the only um, punk band I used to remember was one called DMV, mm. which was on the Kras label, and D stood, stood for drums and mm. V for vocals, and okay, it's drum cool. and vocals. But yeah. but now you've got like the pink suits, yeah. uh, Morbina Galore, yeah, Sewer yeah. Cats, yeah, yeah. Um, the Mefs. There seems yeah. to be a surge, which is a good thing because yeah. you know yeah. you don't have to have a full band. What another one? Um, yeah, is another yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, it just yeah. shows you. You know, don't get dismayed if you can't get a drummer. Just get a yeah, drum yeah. machine or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, uh, just make it work. There's a way to make it work. And if, if Brattacus are watching, you ever want to do a right guard gig? We are so down. Yeah. <laughs> just come, come get involved message. anytime, anytime. We're around. Like, did, uh, did you want to say anything about pink suits, Mom? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think again, like echoing kind of what you were saying, yeah. like just the queerness. Oh. I was like, I love this, like queer rage. I think we need more, <laughs> more of that like in the scene and just in general we're very angry people the yeah. gays we're all very angry so it needs to come out somewhere <laughs> yeah i know it's good it's good that that's represented in in that band it's nice yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
just one final question now. Um, do you, have you been tempted yet to do an all day? <sighs> Yeah, <laughs> of course, wow. We've, well, originally Riot Garden actually started as what we wanted to do was do a whole festival and we were like, yeah, we'll like rival these big ones and we'll just oh, put on a fucking... when you can do the rebellion. That was our plan, yeah. that was yeah. our plan. We were going to, we were either going to go and boycott or we were going to put on a separate festival and then like as soon as we started looking into it, because basically like we had no fucking idea, like I, I was in a band a few years ago, but like that was basically like the only bit that we knew about how to put on events was I was in a band when I was like 16 but then the rest of us were kind of like well we've been to gigs so we must know how to put gigs on and then we started looking into it and we were like wow this is a lot more work than you think so we're like right let's start an 80 capacity venue um, and work our way up from there but I think maybe like the cabaret I mean I think our community events probably going to be an all-day thing because we want to try and get some bands on in the evening um, and then you know have some other stuff going on during the day yeah, so I, I think I, I can I think, think of gonna... one Manchester band that oh, come yeah. to mind. Oh, you yeah. know who I'm thinking. We've got, we've got they a do few. covers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got a few. We've, yeah, we've got a few yeah. Uh, yeah. lined up. We think. But yeah, we think we think maybe our next event. We're going to take a little bit of a break, but then we think maybe our next event. And there's going to be a lot of stuff going on that we're going to try and maybe do an all day thing. We'll yeah. we'll see. We'll see. So keep your eyes out for that. Thank you. And then a whole weekend, and then Riot Garden will take over the world, and we'll be a whole festival, and it's gonna be great. Yeah, queer yeah. Feminist anger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pure queer feminist anger. It's gonna be great. Yeah. So yes, there is. We only plan to get bigger, really, yeah. um, after this. And yeah, we're just yeah excited about this, and excited about the future. Okay. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, you guys keep doing um, what you're doing, and I'm gonna just say one thing. Sick. Yeah. That's a Molly line. I'll be waiting That's to pitch so your line. <laughs> I have noticed that in like every interview that I've done, I've been like, oh my god, I don't know, I feel like a fucking broken record. Like, I no, say the no. same things again and again. No, <laughs> no, I, I actually think it's great. Sick. <laughs>